Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're going to take a look at the all new 2021 and a half Shadow Cruiser 280 QBS Bunkhouse Travel Trailer by Cruiser RV. We're going to take a few minutes, walk you through the inside and the outside of the RV. Then we're going to close it all up and show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now up inside the all new Shadow Cruiser 280 QBS here. And I wanna spend my way through here, show you around, and then we'll head back outside. So the unit, as you've seen on the floor plan that was up at the beginning here, was a two bedroom quad bunk house, uh, one slide out unit. So in the slide out here that we're looking at, you have a tri-fold sofa that will flip out toward us here make into a large bed. Two adults could sleep on it pretty comfortably. You have some overhead cabinets up above there as well. Over here on the left side, you have a traditional booth dinette. It does have some storage underneath, so you got a door on each end. That will also fold down and make into a bed, which would be good for maybe one shorter adult or two kids kind of scenario. You have nice windows in that slide system, all of them open. They are deep tent safety glass windows. So you can get quite a bit of cross breeze through there. Over on the door side of the RV here, you have your kitchen area. So you have some overhead cabinets there above the sink area. You have the gray stone microwave over there. You do again have another window there. It has a metal mini blind on that window and that window also opens. On the bottom of the cabinet, you have two electric outlets. Sometimes in RVs, you'll find the electric outlets hidden on the bottom of cabinets instead of in side walls. A lot of brands of fiberglass units are laminated, so they, it's a little hard to put electric outlets in laminated walls. So you'll find them on the bottoms or sides of cabinets a lot of times. You have the single bowl undermount stainless sink here with a high rise faucet. You have three full extending ball bearing drawer guided drawers along with some storage underneath your sink area as well. You do have the Furion oven with the glass front, has the light built into the oven along with lighted knobs. And you can flip those on and off by a switch. Um, one thing that is a little bit different on these type of ovens, when I turn it on, you'll notice it changed to red instead of the bluish purple color there. You have three burner stove top along with the glass lid that flips back and acts kind of like as a backsplash, but then it'll flip back down and give you a little bit more counter space if you're not using it. And you do have the matching Furion hood range and light. Below that oven, is where your furnace is technically located. So that's the furnace grate there. Um, to the right there is your electric box with your breakers and fuses. And then you'll see the little round duct over there, which is one of your heat ducts. So the heat ducts are ran through the cabinetry and not through the subfloor. Now here we have the eight cubic foot nor called gas and electric refrigerator. So a lot of brands have gone to a 10 cubic foot, um, 12 volt only fridge where this one, the customer did the gas electric eight cubic foot. Also, you'll see a nice arch. It's a little hard probably to see in the video here, but there's a nice arch to this ceiling here. Just kind of gives it a little bit 
uh, you know, more dimension to it. It's not as squared off inside feeling as some of the less expensive trailers. Uh, also, you'll see that little hang down sticker thing there. That is an advertisement talking about the prepping for the WineGuard 4G antenna. So if you wanted to add that on aftermarket, it is pre-prepped to do so. Now behind us here is your entertainment area. Uh, so basically you got your couch, little kitchen area, and your TV entertainment wall there at the foot of the master bedroom. So you have a little bit of storage down below, your Furion radio system there. There is also, I forgot to turn on, a little light switch there. That kind of has a little bit of backlighting there for TV area as well. Um, but they kind of build out that wall a little bit, put that little decorative lighting around and back this section for your TV to be mounted on it. Now this right here is your TV antenna booster system, satellite, cable inlets, uh, all that is right here for your hookups. Over here is your master bedroom. Now this is trying to keep the unit light and tight. So your master bedroom is not real big and neither is the bunk room. Uh, you'll see that when we kind of get back there, but it will sleep, you know, eight to 10 people in here uh, while you're out having a great time. So you do have a camper king bed here. This bed does slide from left to right. There's a latch that you release, uh, which will allow it to slide to one side or the other if you want to. Now, this one was ordered with the optional second air conditioner, which is what you're seeing up here. Window on both sides of the bed do open. There's overhead cabinets and hanging closets. Electric outlet on both sides of the bed. And again, that bed will slide, but there's also storage under there, so you can stash some goodies underneath of there as well. Now in the bedroom area, along with the slide out area, you do have pull down nightshades. And it is backed over here on the sidewall for a uh, TV mount over here. So you could put you a small, probably 24, maybe a 28 inch TV or something there. Kind of the same way over here. Again, guys, don't forget to check out CouchesRVNation.com. They are one of the largest internet wholesale dealers in the country, guys, and it'll definitely save you guys a ton of money on a new RV. Now, on the side of the kitchen cabinet, I forgot to mention, you do have your uh, fire extinguisher down here, another heat vent, the propane leak detector, and then you have your main control panel down there. Uh, which has your monitor panel for your holding tanks and your battery, slide in and out button, awning in and out button, a bunch of light switches, and your battery disconnect and water uh, pump and gas water heater switch control all located right there. Now going on back here, uh, I did also forget to mention, you have the USB charger ports on the side of the dinette there. Here is kind of a big area to put like towels, washcloths, whatever you need to put in there, maybe a little bit of the kids extra stuff or some food, pantry little area, whatever you want to use it for. But mostly probably towels and washcloths. Over here is your bathroom. Bathroom, a little tight, um, you know, does the job though. You got foot flush toilet down here. You got your little tub area slash shower area right here. Heat vent down there, some storage. Traditional wood medicine cabinet. Up top here, you do have a little skylight. There's an air conditioner duct in there as well. A fan and everything up there, and then a little area there for some goodies to go on. On back here is your bathroom area, or I'm sorry, your kids room area. Hopefully they don't use it as a bathroom. Um, right here you have a little dinette area. This is kind of a little cool setup. So the kids during the day could sit back here 
and play games or do whatever on a rainy day we might be stuck inside. The top bunk right here is rated for 275 pounds. That top bunk will flip up, you can see in the picture there, and that dinette will make a bed. So you could sleep four people back here in this room pretty comfortably. You have window at each bunk area there, it does open. You have some storage space down here, a couple drawers and cabinet space there. It's an electric outlet back in there as well. The rear wall is also uh, boxed out there to accept a flat screen TV or something to be mounted there. Another window that does open. No window on this lower bunk, and that is in part because of the outside kitchen you'll see when we get out there. So three opening windows back here in the bunk room area. It does have kind of like a little, uh, I don't know, magazine or book holder. They can stash some of their goodies on each side of that dinette area as well. All vinyl floor back in here. Slide out's electric. You'll see we'll run that in and out when we come back in here in just a little bit. We are going to run to the outside, guys. I want to show you around the outside, and then we're going to come back in, close it up. I want to show you what it looks like closed. All right, guys, we're now back on the outside of the all new Shadow Cruiser 280. QBS bunkhouse travel trailer here. We are going to walk around the outside real quick and then we'll close her all up for you. So first things first on the outside of the new 2021 and a half Shadow Cruiser here is gonna be an all new exterior look. So you have different color fiberglass, different color graphics, front cap's gonna be different. So a whole new look outside. Now up front here on this model, you have a large pass-through storage compartment here. Has a motion light on each side of the storage compartment as well. You can also see uh, some of the aluminum tube bed framing up there. And popping up here in the picture, that black rectangle there uh, pops up, pulls out towards you. It is a little tray that slides down into the floor and then pulls up at you. So you can put some of your more dirty tools and stuff like that down in there. Stuff you're not gonna really use a whole lot of because um, you will have to obviously take things off the lid in order to pull that out. Um, so it is kind of nice. It's a little bit of a hidden storage for some of your dirty tools and stuff, but you do have the inconvenience of moving some stuff to get to it. Uh, but overall, I think it's a great little add-on for extra storage. The baggage door here is held up by slam lock baggage door and magnetic holders. So when you do close it on down, it locks pretty easily. Another nice feature on their locks is it has what's called the key alike system. So the baggage door here matches the baggage door in the back where the outdoor kitchen is, and it also matches the entry door locks. So one key kind of does all. Nice little thing. A lot of brands have multiple keys for multiple doors. So kind of cool. Power awning, LED light strip built in there. Does have the adjustable arms for tilting and water runoff as the manual override in this front head here where you could manually crank it in in case of an electronic failure. But a nice length to the awning compared to some of the other models I've done. Deep tent safety glass windows on the RV. So it's really nice. Again, it's kind of like tent the windows on your car. Just kind of helps keep it a little bit cooler inside. Cuts down on those UV rays from fading out the inside and stuff. Uh, some brands of RVs are just clear glass, so that is a nice thing to have, in my opinion, tinted windows. On that window there, there's this little advertisement sticker there that talks about being pre-wired for a 4G Wi-Fi antenna system. If you wanted to add that on aftermarket, it's pre-wired for it from WineGuard. And also the Asdale Composite advertisement sticker there, guys. Nice feature. The fiberglass, this white fiberglass, is attached to a Asdale composite material, which is then attached to the wall. A lot of brands are fiberglass attached to an eighth inch wood Luon board 
that can delaminate, rot, mold, mildew, all that type of stuff. Asdale is supposed to help eliminate all those type of problems. It's not the perfect material, obviously, nothing's perfect hardly in this world, but uh, it's definitely a huge improvement to the construction of the sidewall of an RV. Down below here, you have the more ride step above step with the quick adjustable feet. This step is rated for 500 pounds, where a traditional hover step is only rated for 300 pounds. You do have a window in your entry door where some brands don't do the window, so that's a nice thing there, just letting in a little, little more natural lighting. Also, you have the large folding entry handle there. Just below that is some more stickers there, the 280 QBS model number sticker. It's where you'll usually find model numbers on an RV as you're walking around the RV dealer's lot. It's good to jot that down if you like the camper so you can let your salesperson know what you like. Advertisement sticker there again for the extended season package. Enclosed underbelly, forced air heat down into that area to try and help keep it from freezing. Also, the three-year limited structural warranty. Again, another nice feature there. A lot of brands are only a one-year limited structural warranty. Not everybody's doing the three, although it is catching on and more and more are starting to do that. Two outdoor speakers up here. You have your stove exhaust up there. There's a little flapper in there that you need to open so that the smoke can blow out. Furnace exhaust out here. The black square there is your uh, back of your refrigerator for access purposes of venting and service maintenance and stuff like that. Just below that, fresh water tank fill. Now the fresh water tank drain is just in front of this axle here underneath of there. Just gotta reach up and drain it out. There's an electric outlet there as well. The little round black thing here is an outside cold water spray port. You have the little outdoor kitchen set up here, and that does give you a little access for water out here while you're cooking. Now you have the little suburban griddle here. Little shelf space back there, and an electric outlet back there. And then there's some storage cabinet here, and a little mini electric fridge here. Now this customer also chose to order his with the portable grill. So when you do the portable grill, it comes with that swing arm mount and up there, one of the boxes that was laying in front of the camper is the grill. So you can do just the griddle or you can opt in for the grill as well. Now you have power jacks also. You can see those down here along with the spot to plug in one of your grills, actually two of your grills. On the back of the RV here, you have your traditional spare tire mounted to a four inch square tube bumper. Um, the bumper is where a lot of people do store their dump hose. And up top there, underneath of the center running light is where you are pre-wired for an observation camera. They pre-wire it for the Furion observation camera. Nice camera system, it's wireless, comes with a little monitor that goes in your truck, just plugs into your cigarette lighter. But basically it shoots a signal to that monitor. It allows you to see behind you while you're driving down the road and also when you're backing into your campsite. You can also see here a nice high arch to that roof line to just kind of shed away as much water as quick as possible. On around to the back side of the RV here, there is your water heater right here, six gallon gas and electric water heater right here. And you can see there in the picture that's popping up, inch and a 16th drain socket in the lower middle electric switch in the lower left corner here, and your pressure relief valve up top. Make sure you pull that pressure relief valve before you try to drain it out so it don't shoot water all over you. To the left here, you have your cable satellite inlets, your black tank flush to rinse out your toilet tank system, along with your city water and your power cord. Now this one was ordered with the 50 amp detachable power cord system because it had that second air conditioner on it as well. Um, so when you do that second air, optional feature there, 
uh, you got to get the 50 amp also. And down below is your gray and black tank dump handles. So you hook your dump hose up there, pull your black, get all the nasty stuff out, pull your gray, rinse out your hose with the soapy dishwater shower water scenario here. Now again, you have that black tank flush that you can hook the hose to and kind of flood that, to that tank and rinse it out. Um, if you do do that, make sure that you don't leave the handle closed because it will backflow into the camper through the toilet if you're not careful. So when you are rinsing that stuff out, just be real cautious, don't get distracted. Now the slide out is an electric slide, so you push a button, it goes in and out. You'll see that here when we run it in and out here in just a few minutes. Um, but up above that slide is another little track that they do, kind of a gutter track. So you actually have the gutter that runs down the whole length of the camper, but then they also put another one just above the edge of the slide, so when the slide is closed, for a little bit added extra protection. On around to the front corner here, you have the other side of the storage compartment. Just to the left of that is pre-prep for, again, a Furion product here. Uh, they have the pre-prep for the Furion portable solar panel. Now, a lot of other panels will actually attach to it. GoPro, Zamp, stuff like that usually come with an adapter that'll plug into that as well. Um, just below that is also your data stickers. These are very important stickers for you guys. The first one popping up here is your main data sticker, which tells you your production date, axle size, VIN number, and some gross vehicle weight information. Don't exceed the gross vehicle weight limits of the RV's frame and stuff, guys. Very important. Next sticker popping up is going to be your unloaded vehicle weight sticker, which again has some information on it. But the main purpose here is the dry weight of the camper, what it weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line. So that's what you're going to be towing around, plus the gear you pack into it. So if you pack, you know, six or seven hundred pounds worth of clothes and food and toys and stuff in here, add that to your unloaded vehicle weight, and that's what you're holding. Next is going to be your cargo carrying capacity. That's just basically telling you how much goodies you can throw into this RV. Don't exceed that weight. And last is going to be your tire sticker. That's very important. Number one, it tells you your tire size for replacement purposes and stuff. But number two, it tells you your tire pressure. That's the most important thing here. That is very important. A lot of people forget about checking tire pressure. It gets too low, it can't hold the weight, it blows out going down the highway. Make sure you check your tire pressure. Tires can only hold a certain amount of weight at a certain pressure. They get too low and you have issues. Nice three-quarter fiberglass cap here. Again, whole new look. We'll pop up a picture of this so you can see a little bit better. Um, but you have a couple LED light strips in here. Again, three-quarter fiberglass cap comes down and you have a lower diamond plate metal down here. Two 20-pound propane tanks behind that cover there. The cover does have the little flip-up lid so you can access it a little bit easier. You have a power tongue jack with a built-in light, manual override, safety chains, seven-way Bargman wiring plug, which runs all your lighting and your brakes and stuff like that. Again, the RV has four-wheel electric brakes, so you gotta have a brake controller in your tow vehicle to make sure you work the brakes of the RV. Uh, two and five sixteenths hitch ball, and it does have a little adjustable foot there at the bottom of the jack as well. Now the unit will come with zero batteries from the RV maker. It does, however, come with one deep cycle battery from Couch's RV Nation, and you will see that usually directly behind the propane tanks. Uh, sometimes there's room to put two if you wanted to add two. Talk with your sales guy about that. You could always do two if you're more of a boondock camper. Also, you're seeing there on the ground the Blue Ox Sway Pro headpiece down there. This customer's going with a weight distribution hitching system, sway system. Very nice hitch here, the Blue Ox Sway Pro. They have other brands available out there, such as like Equalizer, E2, uh, Hensley Air, all kinds of crazy hitches out there. Um, but Blue Ox is one of the most popular, and you will find that available at Couches RV Nation as well. 
All right, guys, we are going to head back inside. I want to close it up and show you what it looks like closed. All right, guys, we're back inside the RV here, and I want to show you what it looks like closed. On the side of your cabinet down here, you have your slide out in and out button. And again, this is an electric slide. Uh, it's a worm gear system. So I'm gonna push the button and you'll notice that the bottom floor, the whole thing kind of tilts up just a hair. Again, it's trying to come in just above the subfloor so it doesn't damage your linoleum and stuff. Make sure that the floor is clean. You don't want any rocks, pebbles, screws, toys, any of that type of stuff in its way because it will run it over damage your floor that's not a good thing now when I'm going in and out I can technically let off the button stop go check make sure that there's no uh, you know water poles or electric poles or trees or whatever in my way um, so you always want to look before you run your room out just to make sure things are going to clear properly but this basically just comes right on in Hear the little ratchety sound, that means I'm all the way in. That'll do that again when we go all the way out as well. Um, so I can kind of squeeze back into here. I could scoot back through here uh, for a smaller guys that can be done. Large people might be a little tough. You're not getting into your bathroom though, obviously, because the door will not go over a couple inches there. Um, so, you know, you could squeeze back in there load some stuff for the kids especially the kids they could jump over that dinette real easy and get back there and throw some of their goodies in uh, but you could come in here load your fridge you know throw a few things in the cabinets and cupboards and stuff like that you can even get into your bed area up here you know if you're stopping at a rest area and need to sleep you could do so again kids could probably jump right over the edge of that dinette thing back there and go sleep back there so for the most part, you could use almost everything except for the bathroom, which, um, you know, if you need to do that, all you gotta do, take a few seconds, hit the button, bump the slide out out, a few extra inches here, and go to the bathroom. But it goes in and out real simple, pretty quick and easy. It's 12 volt powered. So as long as you got a good charged up battery system, um, you know, it'll run in and out real easy. Also too guys, a lot of people don't realize your truck or tow vehicle and stuff is supposed to be wired with a 12 volt feed wire. That's part of the seven way Bargman wiring. When you plug into that and your truck's running, it should feed 12 volt power back to charge up your battery, uh, to allow you to, you know, turn on and do some things as well. Um, you know, so that is something to remember. There's usually a fuse link in your truck that sometimes when you buy your truck, when I bought mine, it wasn't even installed. I had to install it myself. Um, so make sure that you do have that 12 volt charge wire hopped up and it will help with your battery operation and stuff. Um, all right, guys, appreciate you again checking out my video here. 